Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has confirmed that it will continue to enforce a 5% limit on ways and means advances to the federal government for the fiscal year 2024 to 2025. The ways and means advances will finance budget deficits up to 5% of the previous year's revenue, with the expectation that these advances will be repaid by the end of the year uh, they are granted. This decision contradicts a recent National Assembly bill that sought to increase the borrowing limit from 5% to 10%. The CBN's approach also aligns with the medium-term fiscal framework, MTFF, uh, aiming to manage economic expectations, implement consistent policies, and support macroeconomic stability. The CBN Governor Laimi Cardoso said that the Apex Bank will no longer give ways and means to the federal government until the previous loans are repaid. Olayemi noted that it was one of the measures taken by the Apex Bank to curtail the economic hardship currently plaguing the country. Now, our guest this morning is Mr. Shegun Shokwiton, Chairman, Accountability, Kando, and Transparency, Transparency Network. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Shokwiton. Good morning, Mr. Agaji. Thanks for having me. Okay, great. Uh, Ways and Means, National Assembly, you can take up to 10%. Uh, CBN, no, we're not taking up to 10%. We're just taking the 5%. And then you must repay before we can give you Ways and Means again. Um, what does this, does this portend for us? Uh, is the CBN on our side or is it on the side of government? Uh, what do we expect? No, I, I think that um, the CBN is simply... Uh, following the letter of the law that set them up. And um, I, I do believe that if that is going to change, then there has to be an amendment to the CBN Act um, accordingly, um, you know, and, as, and along with the required assent by the president. Um, I'm not sure that that is what the National Assembly has done. And uh, therefore, the CBN is on the right track and on the right path. One of the reasons that we're in the problem that we are in today with regards to the cost of living crisis and the inflation that we are suffering is this very ways and means issue um, and the way that it was, it has been um, flagrantly abused by successive administrations um, since the days of Woodlock Jonathan. Um, it, it got significantly worse under, you know, the administration of uh, Muhammad Buhari, um, you know, to the point where we're talking trillions of naira in ways and means balances, um, 26 trillion at a point, 27 trillion naira at a point, um, you know, uh, which is completely unquestionable, considering what the act actually says, um, you know, so... So for the National Assembly to be trying to jack up the percentage allowed by law, uh, when the problem that was created by the abuse of that instrument has, is still very much with us, we're still struggling with it. You know, it, it, beats, it beats me on what, what, what they had on their mind. Um, the inflation that we see today has two components. We've got the, um, the cost push, inflation part of it, which is derived from subsidiary mobile, you know, exchange rates, devaluation of the Naira, um, um, maybe, uh, you know, problems with, with um, uh, farmers, security, insecurity and all of that. And then you've got the demand to pull side of it. And that's also, you know, significant. And that's the one that the CBN has been targeting with uh, the monetary policy rates instrument. Uh, over the last year and a half, uh, the objective of the MPC has always been to play the balancing act between reducing liquidity and not ensuring that they're not curtailing growth. You know, so that particular problem resulted predominantly from this ways and means problem. You know, where we had um, an explosion of money supply uh, in the system that was not driven by any kind of productivity. It was just government printing money. So uh, the CBN has been trying to clean up this mess. And, you know, there, there was a proposal for securitization, which has been done. And then, you know, there, there, there's information from the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Finance, Mr. Waledo, saying that um, a significant chunk of the outstanding balances in the Ways and Means account at the CBN has now been paid off. 
um, I, I believe I will get updates with regards to the second quarter payments that the Minister of Finance promised. If that payment has been made, then it will mean that Ways and Means has now been paid off by the CBN, um, to the CBN by the, by, the, by the government. So that is the case then. We must ensure that as we move forward with regards to managing that particular uh, budget deficit financing instrument, that we stick strictly within the letter of the law. You know, so I think what the CBN is trying to do is to prevent uh, politicians from pushing us down that very uh, dark alley, uh, alley that we're, we're, we're just we're still trying to come out of. Okay, and, I, and, and I think it's a commendable, commendable move from, from their part. Yes, while we commend this, um, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, the, the act, where did it emanate from? The act establishing the CBN, where did it come from? And why is the pronouncement or the directive of the National Assembly not relevant in this? Because we would be thinking that that is where the laws come from that establish any government body. So if they have made a pronouncement, what was the extent or the, the, the validity or the efficacy of this pronouncement that they made? Was it not law that could have changed uh, how the CBN is run? Yeah, um, the, 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 the National Assembly, you know, is the body that is charged with making laws you know, in this country. And you're right, the CBN Act itself that we speak about, the 2007, CBN Act 2007, obviously, was, was enacted by the um, National Assembly. Um, but obviously, uh, if the central bank is saying no to this action from the National Assembly, then it means that one of the very fundamental and critical components of lawmaking um, in Nigeria and in, in any other part of the world, for that matter, has, has, has been skipped, has not been followed. And that's the stakeholder engagement part of it. You know, as a National Assembly, you can't make laws uh, without consulting with the critical stakeholders within the sector you are making that law for. You can't make a law without consulting and engaging with the primary implementer of the law. Your job is to make a law. Somebody is still going to have to execute that law, you know, and implement it. In this case, it's the CBN. So how is it that the National Assembly appears to have made a law? I haven't seen it, sorry. Um, you know, and I, I'm not sure that it, it went through on to getting an assent from the president. The CBN um, is an agency of government that is under the purview of the president. And, you know, there is no way that the president would have assented to a deal and the CBN would be saying, no, we're not going to do this. It's, it's, it's never going to happen. So I think that what, what has obviously happened is that the National Assembly has come up with, with, with a law that hasn't followed the right process. Um, for example, that apart from the CBN, the CBN is not the only stakeholder, you know, in, in, in the monetary policy management side of, of the Nigerian economy. You know, um, the, the, the banks are, are critical stakeholders. Um, Ministry of Finance is a critical stakeholder. Uh, there are so many others that play within that ecosystem. Um, where was the public hearing when this act was being change, supposedly, if it has been changed. Where was the public hearing? You know, because at that public hearing, I do not think one single human being that operates with knowledge within that sector, within the financial ecosystem, would have supported an increase in the ways that means um, pay of 5% of previous, year, previous year's uh, federal government revenues. You know, because it, it would make no sense, given where we are today, given the problems that the abuse of that instrument has, has created. You may argue you know, on the on the on the other side, on the flip side of the table, that maybe the reason, one of the reasons that that act was not being followed or being obeyed was that the five percent is too small. You may argue that, yeah. and you may have a point. Mm. But the the, the 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 key issue would be that there has to have been an engagement that carried everybody along and got everybody's buy in into okay. whatever they're trying to do. They obviously didn't do this. Okay, um, well. And by the way. Let me quickly chip in that. Let's not forget that 5% of federal government revenues is, 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 um, is a very small amount. <laughs> and I don't think it will move the needle with regards to the kind of deficit financing that this administration and previous administrations find themselves battling you know, as a result of revenue shortages. So I'm not even sure that this is 
um, such a huge deal anyway. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we'll be looking at that. Uh, maybe they're just being frugal they, because they said uh, until the federal government pays whatever they are owing, they're not going to get anything else. So maybe it's just a decision of the CBN to uh, cut costs and make sure that uh, uh, the federal government is disciplined enough. But that's how much we can take this morning. Mr. Chopiton, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. Yeah. We've been talking with Mr. Shegun Shokwiton and we were looking at the fact that the CBN has uh, uh, dropped the directives of the National Assembly that said that they could take up to 10% ways and means uh, to finance the budget deficit and they have talked to their uh, 5% and we we're looking at why they did that and where it will take our economy to. We we're talking with Mr. Shegun Shokwiton. Uh, this is how we wrap it up on the show this morning. It's been a pleasure being here with you. We hope that you'll rejoin us tomorrow for another edition of The Breakfast. In the meantime, remember to stay fit, stay healthy, and be patriotic. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji.